Mesdames et messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Outdoor Therapy. Today, guys, we're going to talk about winter sleeping system because, baby, it's cold outside. Winter sleeping system. It works. We're going to talk about it today. But before we do so, we need to identify two of our enemies. All right, enemy number one, simple, cold. All right, cold. It's fact, it's simple, it's winter, you gotta fight cold. Enemy number dos, humidity. All right, gang, so as I go, I'll explain how we defy and win against our two enemy, which is called and humidity, using four steps, all right? Those four steps will complete our winter sleeping system. And as we go through them, I'll also explain why it's fighting our two enemies here. It's quite simple. Choose the right mattress, all right? You want a mattress, obviously, that's made for winter. That means that it has a high R value. Now, what is an R value? R value means R. La resistance. The air is for resistance, okay? So it has to be able to resist cold, humidity, whatever it's trying to fight underneath it. Okay, so the higher the R value is, the better it is for winter, all right? So you want a winter mattress that has a high R value. With that said, guys, you can stack R values. That means you can have one pad that's like, let's say spring or fall pad, which, is a, which has an R value of three, but you can stack two of them and now you've got an R value of six, which is really, really high. So you can stack them. Obviously that's one strategy. We'll go over that in future videos, um, but I choose to go with a Thermarest Extern uh, mattress. That, that baby, with the new R value system that's in place uh, in 2020, this guy has an R value of 6.9, which means I can go somewhere minus 40 straight on the, the ice or snow and I'll be just fine. Now, everyone is different here and it's not a perfect science. So our values matter. I personally want to have something that's five and higher for winter. Five and higher. That's, that's how I sleep well, okay? Why does it matter the air mattress here? Because we're fighting two enemies at the same time. Obviously cold surrounding us from the bottom, but also humidity coming from the bottom. You know, I'm in Canada. We say it's cold to the bone because our winter is really, really wet. It's, there's a lot of humidity in the air and that just makes it harder to stay warm. So you really need something that's gonna fight the humidity coming from the ground. Step number two. All right, so step number two to fight, obviously, it's to have the proper sleeping bag. So to have a proper sleeping bag, what does that really mean, okay? Everyone sleeps a little bit different. I'm a cold sleeper, so I really, really want something that's gonna keep me warm here. I got friends that are warm sleepers, so if the sleeping bag is too warm for them, they're not gonna have a great night of sleep. I don't know which one you are, tell me in the comments. But with that said, you want a good sleeping bag. Sleeping bags, they got, they got a value, they got a rating. They'll tell you, oh, confer temperature is minus five degrees Celsius or minus 10 degrees Celsius. So, hey, Pierre, I went winter camping with my minus 10 sleeping bag and temperature was supposed to be minus eight. In my mind, I'd be fine, I'd be warm, but I froze to death. What happened here? Simple, okay? It's like a suggestion. You're not gonna die at minus 10 with your minus 10 sleeping bag, but that doesn't mean it's the true comfort level for you. So I truly suggest that you go and have a buffer of 10 degrees. That means if you're going out and you know it's going to be minus 10, bring a sleeping bag that's going to go to minus 20 as a comfort zone. Okay? So and just play with that 10 degree buffer and you it will help. I'm not I'm not telling you you're going to be fine. You're going to be like feeling like like you're in a Hawaii. No, but you're going to be much better. That's for sure. So aim for a sleeping bag that has a 10 degree buffer uh, towards the temperature you're gonna be fighting and challenging here. Well, you know that you need to wear layers, right? That's like the basic of winter camping. 
wear different layers to adjust the temperature uh, during the day, during whatever work you're doing. Well, it's the same with the sleeping system. It's our third step here, layering. So first layer, just like in your house, all right, you need to create a vapor barrier from the ground, okay? So that can be done with a simple um, reflective tarp, like a really cheap one that you can find at the dollar store. You just lay that on the ground, that's your first layer. It's the vapor barrier, okay? So still fighting humidity here, not the cold though, but really fighting the humidity. Then second layer is gonna be your air mattress or whatever mattress you decide to use. That's proper for winter with the right R value, okay? Third layer is your sleeping bag. I personally have an old, mine is sturdy, uh, down sleeping bag from Meg that's about 15 years old now. I'm not sure it's the true rating anymore, to be honest, because that thing uh, went through hell with me, but that's your third layer still. So vapor barrier, sleeping pad, sleeping bag, and then I like to use this guy over here, okay? I don't know if you can, proper see it come on autofocus is not with me today all right so it's the thermalite fabric reactor plus it's a liner guys so it it adds about 10 degrees to your sleeping bag okay so it creates a second bubble of warmness inside the sleeping bag okay so layer you add that in and then that that's your like layer from inside but you also want to create a layer from outside okay and to do so i use the soul uh, bivouac so that's the soul escape bv it's it's like an emergency bv but a reusable one so those are not really expensive and that helps to do two things really okay so with the liner you're fighting cold mainly with the bv here you're fighting humidity. And how so? Because you're gonna be breathing so much, okay, in your tent, you're gonna create a lot of condensation, okay? That's humidity not from the ground, but from around you, from the surrounding. And if that humidity will, that condensation will create water in your tent, and it might make your sleeping bag wet. And once your sleeping bag is wet, that's where you're in trouble during winter. So adding this guy, is creating a layer, an outside shell. So the water might drip on this, on the surface of this, but it's never gonna touch your sleeping bag. And your sleeping bag is gonna stay dry and you're gonna stay warm and you're gonna be happy, a happy camper because you're dry and warm, all right? So those are the four layers. So your vapor barrier, mattress, sleeping bag, inner liner, outer shell, and you're gonna be great. So what's the next step now? All right guys, step number four here. Super simple, it's called ventilation. You wanna create an airflow going here, okay? That way, the humidity that you create escape your shelter, especially if there's like two, three of you in the tent, you're gonna create a lot of it. So the best way to do that is to open a little bit your windows or open a little bit the, the door of your tent, okay? And also light a candle. It, it sounds weird, it, but it makes a huge difference. And you can find all kind of different wax candle out there. Uh, I know Yuko is a company that's really famous for the candle and their candle system. Um, it makes a difference. You're not gonna be warmer because of the candle. That's like, I don't, I don't know what people think that. The candle's not gonna make your shelter warm. It's, it's not, it doesn't create enough BDU to do so, but it will help a lot to kill humidity. And if you can be dry, you're gonna be much more warm. So create an airflow to get rid of the humidity and kick that up with the candle. And now I'm gonna go see what my dogs want. All right guys, pro tip, uh, just to make this better, simple. You boil water, you put it in an algae bottle, and you put that bottle at the bottom of your sleeping bag where your feet are because you lose warmth from your, your the end of your body, okay? So head, hands, feet, that's from the extension of your body. That's where you lose heat. So if you put the warm bottle there, but not just warm, like boiling water in the Nalgene up there. You're gonna have a, a, a source of warmness in your sleeping bag, okay? For, right for your feet, so that's gonna help big time. Second pro tip, a heat pad, a buddy heat pad, they're usually that big. You put them on your back, 
on on your lower back actually so when you lay on your your back flat 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 <laughs> you're gonna feel the entire warmness through the through your entire back so now your feet are warm and your entire back is gonna become warm too you're gonna feel like a champ I'm telling you so that's that's the best tip I can give you guys to have a good good night of sleep so if we go back what are the four steps to have a great night of sleep during winter step number one get the right mattress with the right R value step number two the right slipping bag with a buffer of 10 degrees okay step number three layers layers all right vapor barrier mattress slipping bag inner liner outer shell perfect step number four ventilation kill humidity all right so kill the cold kill the cold kill the humidity and we win this fight we got a great night of sleep during winter camping hey gang i hope you liked this uh pro tips gear review how do you want to talk about this hey how do we call this I hope you like this winter sleeping system strategy guide. I would really like to know what kind of system you're using. So please tell me in the comment section. Also hit the subscribe button uh, and the bell notification. You know, that way you don't miss our next video. Thank you for joining us and I'll see you on the next one. Oh, so big. Jesus. I can't go with this.